All right, so let's take up this issue of uh, what the nature of rationality is, and this takes us into metaphysics and epistemology. Now, broadly speaking, Rand is a realist uh, in the tradition of Aristotle, John Locke, and others. And she is a naturalist, uh, uh, also in the tradition of Aristotle, uh, John Locke, and others. That is to say, she's not an advocate of any form of theism or supernaturalism, right, metaphysically. It also means that when we turn to the epistemological issues, that she has very little truck with any approach that base, bases itself on faith, right, or mysticism. Instead, the most important epistemological issue for us is a healthy respect for our cognitive capacities as human beings. And the most distinctive cognitive capacity that human beings have is the capacity of reason. And rationality, then, is the policy right, of the commitment to the full use of one's rational capacity right, or the capacity of reasoning. Now, this uh, takes us into uh, some combined metaphysical and epistemological points uh, that Rand makes. And actually, for Rand, metaphysics tends to be a very brief subject. Uh, she's very much an opponent of what she calls armchair metaphysics. That is to say, the idea that somehow philosophers from their armchairs or from their desk basically sitting around without actually going out and doing empirical investigations of the world can spin out theories about the ultimate nature of the cosmos, right, and so forth. Instead, for Rand, uh, uh, metaphysics is a very brief subject, just identifying a few very general features about the nature of the universe, you know, that the universe exists. Uh, one, of course, would get into the arguments for and against the existence of God, and on Rand's uh, analysis, one would conclude that there are no such things as gods uh, as part of the features of the universe because the arguments uh, are not very compelling. Uh, but beyond that, uh, all one can do, right, is identify that there is a universe, that it's the naturalistic world, that it is a universe of cause and effect, right, composed of entities and processes, each of which has an identity. And after that, the philosophers stop, and everything then needs to be done by the sciences properly speaking. Quote, Actually, do you know what we can ascribe to the universe as such, apart from scientific discovery? Only those fundamentals that we can grasp about existence. Not in the sense of switching context and ascribing particular characteristics to the universe, but we can say, since everything possesses identity, the universe possesses identity. Since everything is finite, the universe is finite but we can't ascribe space or time or a lot of other things to the universe as a whole." Unquote. So the more fundamental, or at least in the more fundamental branches of philosophy, it's not so much metaphysics as epistemology where uh, uh, Rand has more to say. And here when we are articulating right, the importance of reason and the com uh, com concomitant uh, commitment to rationality, epistemological issues become fundamental. Now there's a bridge concept that she uses here uh, that has both a, a metaphysical and a uh, uh, epistemological component that she calls the primacy of existence. And I will introduce it to you by means of a quotation from Rand and then gloss it myself. So in Rand's words, this is what the primacy of existence is. The primacy of existence, of reality, is the axiom that existence exists. That is, that the universe exists independent of consciousness, of any consciousness, that things are what they are, that they possess a specific nature, an identity. The epistemological corollary is the axiom that consciousness is the faculty of perceiving that which exists, and that man gains knowledge of reality by looking outward." Unquote. 